Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The world faces a catastrophic climate change crisis, yet this Environment Bill falls very short, in particular at a time that we're going to host the COP26 and should be uh, basically taking leadership for the entire world. After all, global emissions are actually up 60% since the Kyoto Conference in 1990. Uh, global temperatures are at 1.2% above the 1850 base rate and will hit the 1.5% uh, degree level um, by 2030 on the current forecast, which will mean loss of land, uh, major problems in terms of migration, food loss, etc. And meanwhile, something like 7 million people are dying currently every year from air pollution caused by fossil fuel, fuel extraction and use. So I'm very pleased that there's an attempt in this bill, a new clause uh, 29, to link human health with environmental health. Because, after all, 64,000 people a year are dying from air pollution on the latest figures at a cost of £20 billion to our economy. Uh, we know, of course, that air pollution was registered as the cause of death uh, in the tragic case of Alakissi uh, Debra. And in the coroner's report that uh, followed, um, in the Prevention of Death report, the coroner actually recommended that we have World Health Organization legally binding air quality limits enforced in law. And following a meeting I had with the, with the Environment Secretary and uh, Ella's mother, Rosamond, um, the Environment Secretary said he would look again at that. And I hope he will when this comes back from the Lords, because we know that, of course, uh, air pollution is worse in the poorer, more diverse uh, communities. We know that uh, air pollution increases the risk and level of death for, from, from coronavirus, and about 12 per cent, according to the Max Planck Institute. Other studies have been done by Harvard and across the world showing this link. And of course, Dominic Cummins has just reminded us that coronavirus is airborne and that more emphasis needs to be put on that. But we need to put more emphasis on air pollution as well. We also know that other than the death rate, the infection rate is higher with air pollution. So this is something we do need legally binding who limits on. Turning to fracking, uh, fracking uh, emissions from methane um, are actually... 80 times worse than carbon dioxide for global warming. Given that, and given the fact that uh, we know from satellite photography that fracking emits 5% fugitive emissions, in other words, 5% of the methane is leaked, what that means is that fracking is worse than coal for climate change and should simply be banned. Meanwhile, we need more trees, uh, not just to absorb carbon, but to store carbon by putting them into infrastructure, into construction, in place of concrete. I mean, if concrete was a country, it would be the third biggest emitter of uh, uh, greenhouse gases of any country in the world. So I'm glad, as the last speaker mentioned um, from Cunnan Valley, that um, Wales is taking a lead on this. We've appointed in Wales a, a climate change uh, minister, Julie James from Swansea West as well. We'll be pushing forward with a national forest uh, using wood in building. But in, in, in contrast, in the UK, we've got a situation where most of the hardwood is actually burnt, not just causing um, climate change, but causing uh, harmful health pollution. Uh, so therefore, that should really be pulped up and put into insulation in, uh, in construction instead. Meanwhile, of course, we've got Brexit, which means we've got more food miles. We need a, an initiative in COP26, again, to put carbon pricing into trade. We've got a situation where China, by way of examples, uh, now generating 28% of global carbon emissions, with more emissions per head than people in Britain, for example. So we need a joined-up approach led through this Environment Bill, which includes an approach from trade, from transport, from health, from local government and planning uh, and housing, uh, and not just an EFRA-led effort that will make quite a little difference to the massive problems we face. So, in summary, we need much more, much sooner, from all our departments, and really to improve this environment bill dramatically to make a real difference and to take global leadership.